The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. I'm a black man. Rest in peace, Jessica. Uh, leave, it to er- leave it to Eric with the shout out there. Jason, what the hell is wrong? We don't have enough time to get into that. Good evening, afternoon, whenever you're listening to this, everybody, and welcome to episode three of season three of The Kickoff here on the W2 of Network and on Last Word on Sports.com. I am your host of this train wreck. My name is Harry Broadhurst. Joining me, as per usual, the executive producer turned co host, Eric Watkins. Now, Jets fans, I tried to warn Sam when he started inquiring about my shenanigans. What happened is not my fault. Do not blame me. All right, Wilford, we get it. You want to be on the show. Jesus. (laughs) The co-host turned producer... Turned co-host, turned pro- Jesus Christ, Fisco. Get your <laughs> shit to I've already told you, you can make this much more simple to yourself. Just call me the utility man. I, was, well, you- I thought he was talking about put peanut butter on your balls so your dog would shut up. <laughs> well, in regards, to, in regards to you being a utility man, Brandon, you're definitely a tool. Oh, God. <laughs> And the chairman of the W2M Network, Jason Teasley. Good afternoon. My name is Jason Teasley. My team sucks, and they and by that saying that, Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills are a far more superior team. They kicked the dog piss out of my New York Giants over the, this weekend. There, Harry, you can now go suck a dick. Yeah, or, yeah, I, rub, rub it in. Bring it on, Harry. Let's get this out of the way. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And if you do not like that... I will take a Twix bar and seduce you after the show. Okay, I will say this much real quick here. A, I think you guys might have something with Daniel Jones. And we'll talk more about Jones here in a little bit. But I, I think that I think the time has come to focus on the future in New York. And for as much as I respect what Eli's done, the two Super Bowl rings, two of the three losses on Brady's Super Bowl resume, I think it's more about the future in New York right mm-hmm. now. B, all three of y'all can suck it. Florida 24, Miami 20, Buffalo 28, the Giants 14. Nana, Nana, fucking boo boo. I had to suffer through the last uh, like four minutes of that game because uh, because of how big of a blowout New England was putting on Miami. Miami is historically bad. We will talk about this in a few seconds. Trust me. Both both of those teams in particular I'll be talking about in depth later. We'll talk more about Miami here in a few moments, actually, as we open the show like we always do. It's time for Studs and Duds. Eric Stud hit me. Well, I mean, aside from me, despite my own personal... Family show! (laughs) That's one. And speaking of, I mean, there's a certain quarterback who, let's just say, made an extra name for himself and uh, starting with his new team where he, he had a decent bit of a slightly shaky start to the season. But that completely went away as one Jimmy Garoppolo, 17 for 25, 296 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, making the Bungles look like the Bungles we all figured out they would be this season. Jimmy G, you are my stud. And, uh, yeah, I might have to hit you up with a couple of uh, phone numbers. I need to reach out to you on Twitter. (laughs) Uh, Brandon, this would have been the week to pick against Cincinnati because they almost cost you last week. Fair enough. Fair enough. Brandon, stud. Hey, hey, Harry, and and Brandon, Eric, you can muted. you you can do it. I mean, hey, you can't mute me. Guess what time it is? Uh, last time I checked, I'm looking at my phone and my clocks here. It's Mahomes' time. It, it is, is indeed. Mahomes, four hundred forty-three yards, four touchdowns in the twenty-eight ten route over Oakland at the final baseball game. 
baseball football hybrid game at Odako Coliseum. Um, yeah. Time out, time out, time out real quick here, because those numbers are actually inflated. Outside of the second quarter, he really didn't do a whole lot. Fair enough. Yeah, but for for the second quarter... Throw for 278 yards and four and touchdowns. four touchdowns. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 I have to admit it was impressive, especially with as good as Oakland looked against Denver on Monday night of Week One. Exactly. That being said, let's see what happens when Mahomes and Kansas City plays an actual team with a defense such as Baltimore, who they get this week. Oh yes, no, I'm not denying the fact that he could potentially have a bit of a sophomore slump still. But as of right now, the sophomore slump and Madden curse, he has the double whammy going against him. It's not hurting him so far. Well, he wasn't on the Sports Illustrated cover. He's got that going for him. Fair enough. Jason, stud. Uh, Building on what Biscuit said, my stud happened to be on the receiving end of six of those passes. Demarcus Robinson caught all six as his targets from Mahomes for a hundred and seventy two yards and two touchdowns. The kid kind of stepping into that role that Tyree Kill has uh left with the injury. And to point something out, would this really be a sophomore slump for Mahomes considering it's his third year in the league? Well second full season I Call it. He did technically play in a game in his first season, though. He started yes, the but, last game. But that I don't count that as a full, as your well, rookie season. I mean, he won the rookie well, of the year last year, so, you know. The eligibility on that rookie of the year thing flip-flops seemingly from season to season. Sometimes yeah. it's cool if they played the year before. Sometimes it's not. I think it's basically if you play, like, more than half of the season... It, your if, if, my understanding is you have to play at least six games. Mm. Sounds about uh, it. Well, that would make sense then. Eric, do you, Eric, do you remember who my stud was for week one? Oh. Amongst all of the craziness that's recently transpired, no. <laughs> You were anti kicker week one. I was pro kicker. Yes. Oh God. Oh. And my stud the came back. My stud was Will Lutz. Well, this week my stud is yet again a kicker, although this one with slightly more of a personal bias. Eddie Pinheiro, as time expires from fifty three yards out at Mile High Stadium at Invesco. Is it, in Vesco Field at Mile High Stadium, yes. I believe. Yes. Yes. As the Chicago Bears defeat the Denver Broncos 16 to 14. Look out, AFC North. The Bears have a kicker now. <gasps> on a wow. related note, on a related note, Eddie Pinheiro, graduate of the University of Florida. Go Gators. We'll talk more about the Gators here in a few moments, though. Don't worry. One minor <laughs> correction it's actually now Empower Field at Mile High. So what, did Invesco go under or something? Probably. Probably. I mean, it's happened to other ballparks. I remind you of the one in uh, Houston. What did it used to be called? Wasn't uh, it like a- e- Exxon. Or, uh, what was it? Uh, Enron. Enron. There we Enron. Was. Yeah. That's it. Now it's like AT&T ballpark or no, something? No, it's Minute Maid. Minute Maid. That's it. AT&T is the, uh, is the um, Dallas stadium. No. Well, yes. And it, it used to be San Francisco. For baseball, I always call it San Francisco's baseball stadium, Candlestick. Well, they moved out of Candlestick. Yeah, they've been out of Candlestick for like twenty years now. I know, I know. They're 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 at a new stadium now, but the old stadium was always Candlestick to me. Yes, I know. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, let's flip the script here. Let's move over to the bad performances from this past weekend, and let's start with Eric. Okay, I've got to really zero in on a conference. But there's an asterisk. Ohio State, for what you did to Indiana, you are exempt from this. Nebraska, although, yes, it was Northern Illinois, 44 to 8, you are exempt from this. But the rest of the Big Ten, and I know, Harry, you'll talk about a particular team later on in the show. 
you either between losing or severely underperforming. The whole rest of the conference that played on Saturday, you're all by duds. I mean, y'all talking about one to be big and bad and doing all this and that for the college football playoff? No. Uh uh. Mm mm. No. This did not help. Brandon? My dud for the week is the Carolina Panthers. Yes, they've had some issues. Yes, Cam isn't at 100%. And yes, the Bucks have improved somewhat this season. But still, you, you're, you want to have the opportunity to even have a chance to do anything in the NFC South this season. You got to be able to beat the, bo- the cellar dweller of your division, don't you? Hey, who are you to doubt the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Not to mention, we're at this point supposedly one play away from seeing Will Greer quarterback in Carolina. Jason, I feel like you would be okay with that. I I would support that decision, but they bypassed him and someone else is starting over him this weekend in place of Cam. Yeah, that's why I say you're one play away instead of two. Hey, Eric, I got a question for you. Where are my Buccaneers? On your bucking head? <laughs> Under my bucking hat. <laughs> Jason? Yeah. Dud. Well, I- I'm going to kind of pile on that shit team from South Florida. Um, my dud is the Miami Dolphins. <clears throat> I don't think it could get any worse. I mean, it was... I think it's 102 points in two games. I mean, come on. I'm pretty sure they can, us four can sign a contract, (laughs) you know, not give up a, not give up fucking 102 points in two games. Good Lord. Granted, if Ballers was still filming in Miami, I would damn sure get us contracts with the team right now. (laughs) Just so I could get on the show. I'm going (laughs) to pile on their misery even more later. Oh, me and Eric are about to pile on their misery right now, actually, because Eric and I did some research. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. That's a dangerous combination when you get the two the two researchers involved looking up facts as to how historically bad this Dolphins team is. Oh, and it's not even the half of it. <laughs> Eric, but, you take it away. Jason mentioned 102 points. That is a factually accurate statement. 59 against Baltimore, 43 to New England, scoring only 10. That is a negative 92-point differential. To put into historical perspective how bad that is, it ties the 1971 New Orleans Saints for the worst plus-minus differential after two games in the Super Bowl era. Yeah, well, it was actually 1973 with Archie Manning at quarterback for those teams. So, so they topped the Baghead team? They tied with them. Well, but fair enough. That's just in the Super Bowl era. It gets this, worse. This is a historically bad team, Eric. Yes, you're correct. While they sit tied for the worst in the Super Bowl era, as the league celebrates its centennial season, you have to go back, way back. The only teams that were worse, the 1961 Oakland Raiders, who lost to the Houston Oilers and San Diego Chargers by a combined score of 99 to nothing, for a minus 99 point differential. And the 1923 Rochester Jeffersons, who lost to the Chicago Cardinals and Rock Island Independents by a combined 116 to nothing. That was a Rochester team that was among their last four years as a franchise. They would go 0 24 and 1 during that span, while the Chicago or, Cardinals would be battling with the Decatur Staleys, which we now know as the Chicago Bears, for a league title. 
for those wondering, 0-24-1, and or as Browns fans of the modern era would call it, a good couple of seasons. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's, go ahead and, let's go ahead and pile on even more here, Eric, shall we? Yeah, why not? <laughs> this is per the... There was an article on ESPN that I will link in the show description of the teams that are 0-2 that still have the best chance to make the postseason. And actually, Eric's Jacksonville Jaguars, who are playing right now on Thursday Night Football as we record this, are the second highest percentage of any of those teams to still make the playoffs. Being in the AFC South right now helps with that. No team is over 500 there. Regardless, to the historical badness of the Dolphins, and then we'll move on from piling on, even though it's kind of fun, let's be honest. I want to pile on a little more a little later on. I have a, I, I, I'm going to steal uh, Harry's role for, for a second. I have another historically bad statistic for the Miami Dolphins from this year. The Dolphins are the first team in the NFL – to lose consecutive games by 40 or more points since 1949. It gets worse when you factor in that both of those games are, were at home. Throughout the entire history of the league, no team had ever suffered multiple 40-point losses at home in a single season. The Dolphins did it by week two. And for all of you stat nerds who are looking at things like DVOA, which is the defense adjusted value over average, yeah, having something that's negative more than 100%, that's rarefied air. That's where the Dolphins are through two weeks. This is a historically bad franchise this year. Yeah, if I'm uh, Mercury Morris and the gang are popping that champagne for the 17-0 uh, and 0 season in 72, y'all better be prepared to be the first franchise ever to have a team season where you run the table, and then you have another where you run the table backwards. Well, that was going to be my buy or sell question for you guys. Do you think that they will go 0-17, well, 0-16? We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Don't worry. There are questions still to come, and I will leave it at that for now. Fair enough. Quit stepping on my toes, Bisco. (laughs) I'm the host! Fair enough. Bisco's going to Bisco. (laughs) (laughs) That's usually an off-air thing, and Jason just popped me with it. Well done, Jason. All right, so my dud for the week. Um, Eric mentioned the Northern Illinois Huskies a little bit ago. They were the victims of a 44-8 to drubbing at the hands of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. While that was bad for the MAC West, it wasn't as bad as the MAC East was last week. Eric. Mm-hmm. There were six teams in the MAC East. Yes. Through the third week of the college football season, not a damn one of them is 500 or better. Are you, is this another race to the bottom Five of the teams in the MAC East are one and two. Akron is zero and three. Every single team in the MAC East lost this past weekend. Oh, jeez. Well, it looks like I don't know. Me, it's God. If that's the case, then there's probably not going to be a single one of them that's going to be bowl eligible in this. Maybe they luck up and win in Detroit. I mean, well, two. The- Real quick, Visco, what's going to end up happening is one of the teams is going to stand out of the, as the best of the rest and run the table on the eastern side of the MAC and mm. probably win that division. True. To be Go fair, ahead. though, I mean, this is typically non-conference season. Uh, were they all playing, like, higher higher teams? Two of them were in conference. One of them that was to an independent Granted, two of them were to major schools. Kent mm-hmm. State got blown out by Auburn, and um, I want to say Ball State was the other that got ran by somebody. But of those one and two and zero oh and three starts, 
three of those losses were to FCS schools. Oh, that, that's bad. Eric? Mm-hmm. So, that happened. Yeah, to put a cap on that, Ball State quick. was a little bored Atlantic. Real quick here, though, before we go into So That Happened here, let me preface this edition of So That Happened for Eric. <laughs> so That Happened, the adult edition. <laughs> not, a fa- not a family show. Carry on, Eric. Okay. Now, I had another story all queued up and ready to go. Had we recorded on a typical Wednesday night instead of now on a Thursday night, that would have been it. It but was the- hard to it was heartfelt. It was wonderful. It was, well, let's be honest, not Eric. No, it, it really wasn't. But even I had to, you know, give a bit of a shout out. But somehow the universe has been smiling upon me all week. Mother daughter adventures aside, this story fell right into my lap. Everybody knows about the, they call him the Mississippi mustache, but no. Seeing him get off the plane and going to Houston, everything that he's done, and even with stories involving Steve Spurrier, Garner Minshew II, you are one of us. You are now the Florida stash. That being said, if you were to look at, say, the pantheon of certain webcam sites, comparing them to the big four sports, you have my free cams, Chatterbait, and Streamate. They're like the MLB, NFL, and NBA. But there's the one that's the NHL. That's Cam Soda. Highly recommended. Up and coming site. Patronize it as you wish. Cam Soda, if you want to throw a few free tokens my way, we shall discuss. No problem at all. (laughs) They offer Garner Minshew a very, very special deal. Something that he pretty much did anyway at times at Washington State. If you're a professional athlete, people would want to see you work out, learn a few things. Am I right? Mm-hmm. If you happen to be physically oh, God, attractive. God, I've heard this story. If you happen to be physically attractive, people would want to see you in the nude. Am I right? Potentially. Don't answer okay. that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Cam Soda put two and two together. They've reached out to the Florida stash himself, Garner Minshew II, and offered him an endorsement deal worth up to $1 million. All he has to do is be himself, do some workouts in a ranging stage of undress, either completely nude, only wearing a jock strap or doubling down with the relationship with Cam Soda and wearing their line of, as they dub them, penis puppets. One of them in production happens to be a Jaguar. <laughs> now, and they've also said, if you go ahead and you read the letter, they have reached out to the man, the myth, the legend, Big Dick Nick himself, among a couple of others in the NFL. So Garner, trust me on this one. Mike Leach didn't steer you wrong when he said you could go to Wazoo and lead the nation in passing. Get a little bit of a side hustle for yourself. You will thank us. I feel like this works so perfectly since he is a Jaguar, since that is Eric's team. It's Mm -hmm. like this was destined to happen. Also, not to mention, I mean, he does rock that porn stash. I, I'm telling you, sometimes when situations fall in your lap, it's a sign. It's almost like divine energy coalesced to bring this together. I approve of it. The views and opinions of Eric Watkins on the previous <laughs> segment are solely his. And do not listen. <laughs> you Maybe know you can't do the know. rest of that with a straight face, Harry. Jason, so that happened. Oh, so that happened. Um, This reflects back on Eric being a Jags fan. What happens when you have a star cornerback that um, 
goes to the sideline and gets into it with your head coach. So that leads to trade rumors swirling and the good possibility that you'll be without said star defensive back. So that's what happened Sunday. Doug Marone and Jalen Ramsey had a almost physical altercation on the sideline after a play that was caught on camera and it kind of got blown up and kind of caught a lot of media attention and now there's rumors swirling abound that Jalen Ramsey tonight will be his last name as a Jacksonville Jaguar. So, um, oh, how the mighty defense has fallen. This Jags team is in a free fall. I mean, like you said, we're recording on a Thursday night because, you know, somebody had to go and have a slight heart attack and that went un- unnoticed and kind of put a wrench in things last yeah, night. Yeah, quit trying to die, Teasley. Yeah, let, let's not be pulling uh, a Jerry the King Lawler here now, Jason. Exactly. Well, if uh, anybody's getting into stuff where they could potentially uh, die, that's me. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, well, I've, no, seen I mean the, I've seen some of the women he associates with. He's not kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, I thought I still thought Sean was producing, and I figured death would be a lot better option. <laughs> um, Jesus. So, Yikes. so with that being said, oh. uh, Eric, I, I got I got to ask you, how the fuck does that make you feel as a Jags fan, I having swear. your head coach fight with your prime time player? I swear, if. That man goes to a place like Kansas City and becomes another on the long list of Jaguars to win a Super Bowl with another team. I'm going to go down to TIAA Bank Stadium, and y'all better have some bail money ready. I can't take this anymore. I I wonder if uh, how well the defense is playing so far tonight has any impact on uh, on this whole uh, ordeal, though. I hey, actually, well, it's like everybody who's a soccer fan. When they have a player listed to be uh, in rumors or stuff, they put themselves in the shop window. Well, I think it's more a case of the defense trying to show up and show out and show that Ramsey isn't necessarily needed in Jacksonville. Fair enough. They were a group of no names when they took over when they took over the league two years ago. There were maybe two people that. Everybody around the NFL had heard of, and then a bunch of guys who were on maybe on a couple of people's radar, but n- nobody thought of them as superstars. And then that year, Saxonville was born, and now everybody knows who names like Jalen Ramsey and Calais Campbell are. Speaking of which, Calais Campbell, a couple of sacks tonight, and uh, giving me my fantasy team some good points. Hopefully, if you're planning on watching the Thursday night game, you do so before you listen to this show. <laughs> Spoiler it's, alert, Brandon. Look, it's the Titans and the Jaguars. Have you seen the latest episode of Gridiron Heights? Nobody's really going to be watching this right now. Well, that's what happens when you have the second of two NFL Network exclusive NFL games. They ain't putting any good shit on NFL Network only. Nope. Precisely. I mean, it did make cause me to fall asleep <laughs> before we even fucking recorded the show. Oh, we had to hit. We had to hit Jason with CPR for a second time in two days. <laughs> Man, that's dark even by my standards. Yeah, it is. Brandon? That's, that's oh. darker than Eric. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much on par with the course of his show. Brandon? So, that happened. Well, mine isn't so much a so that happened, so much as it is a so that is happening. Two teams that have gone into the gutter are now deciding to move to the future instead of looking back at the past. One, not so much really looking back at the past so much as just using a random quarterback that they decided to pick up. Giants and the Dolphins, the almighty Dolphins that we've talked about so much today, have both decided to start their rookie quarterbacks, their first-round draft pick quarterbacks, this upcoming week. 
Daniel, Daniel Jones and Josh Rosen are both going to start. I almost feel bad for piling on the Dolphins. Notice the key word in that sentence. <laughs> almost. Most. Yeah, the one yeah. I truly feel bad for is Josh Rosen. First Arizona and now this. And if I read it correctly, those two are going to be two of 18 quarterbacks this week who are starting games who are all under the age of 26. We're going to be having a conversation about quarterbacks in the NFL in just a few moments. Don't you worry. Dun, dun, dun. Dramatic reverb. <laughs> All right. So with an honorary mention to Eric's original So That Happened, because, well, despite the fact that I can't stand the pricks in Athens, I got to give him credit when credit is due. I'm referring to Athens, Georgia, the home of the University of Georgia Bulldogs. And the show of support that they gave Arkansas State head coach Anders, Brian Anderson, I believe is his name. Mm -hmm. Correct, Eric? Blake Anderson. Oh, Blake Anderson. I knew it was I knew it began with a B, I wasn't sure which. What is this? Workaholics? Well, that's not a fucking description for us for. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that show, so Okay, back to my statement here. With with Arkansas State in town to play Georgia out of conference and basically cashing a check game, during the course of the past offseason, Blake Anderson lost his wife to breast cancer. And the University of Georgia fans decided to show up and show out in her memory. Pretty much the entire stadium dressed in pink instead of Georgia red to support breast cancer awareness for Aunt Coach Anderson and his family. Aunt Coach Anderson clearly, visibly in tears as he's discussing the the outs, the showing of support when the ESPN when they had the interview on ESPN.com. So I just wanted to say here, as a diehard Florida Gator fan who couldn't think of less of them on the field, to the University of Georgia and its supporters and students, well played. Hashtag mm -hmm. pink out, and uh, even more of a reason for me to root for you guys come Halloween. <laughs> you shut the fuck up, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to point something out. Um, you know, good as feel-good story that is, being in the University of Georgia and having a pink out kind of sounds, sounds like partial Eric shenanigans title of a video or something. I'm pretty sure it's probably on his many vids account. Uh, not exactly like that, but it can be. Especially if I make another trip to Vegas, because I can't. Yeah. show! <laughs> okay, that's gone far enough. Let's go back here. My son... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Y'all got me so discombobulated. I kind of... <laughs> My Facebook Messenger to remember my so that happened now. Good grief. Stalling for time. We're <laughs> stalling for time. <laughs> no, seriously, you guys got me all kinds of discount. Okay, we're I, at I can I can fill in time. I mean, you know, you don't have to stall. I could talk about I could talk about something, you know, like having a being being uh, accused of seducing someone with a Twix bar, um, which made me really, which may, I, really made me uncomfortable, and I'm sorry I, that you made that made you feel that way, Eric. But look, I could talk about my story how we took a quick little trip in a nice red Mitsubishi, driven by a special someone who has a place in my heart. <sighs> Especially when they're taking you on a rendezvous to meet their daughter. Okay, but that's folks, Brian Greasy can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> My so that happened for the week is from the Florida Kentucky game this past sun this Saturday Sunday 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 yeah sure let's go this past Saturday night on ESPN where. Long-time listeners of the show know my diehard affiliation and love for the University of Florida. 
Watching the game, the Gators were down 21 to 10 when Felipe Franks suffers what is probably a season ending dislocated ankle. I think he fractured his ankle too, I believe they said in the uh, the report that came out afterwards. They like did, he, and I thought that they confirmed that it was season ending. Yeah. Well, that you never know. Modern modern science is pretty impressive. But anyway. And now I will be the first person to admit that I have been one of Felipe Franks' harshest critics on this show. I have talked about the fact that he has single-handedly cost us games we should win. The Kentucky game last year. A couple of games the previous season back when Florida went like 5-7. and seven. Brian Greasy took it a step further this past Saturday on ESPN, where he said despite all of Franks' on- and off-the-field troubles at Florida, what off-the-field troubles, you fucking asshole? There has never been a report of Felipe Franks getting so much as a parking ticket on the University of Florida, let alone any kind of bullshit that you see about so many different college athletes these days. Or NFL ones that happen to wear the jersey number 17 and play for the New England Patriots right now. (laughs) This was Brian Greasy making a story out of something that wasn't a story. Either there's some major league inside information going on here, which I sincerely doubt, because despite the fact that your father had a perfect season, you were never anything better than average as a quarterback yourself. At Michigan or in Denver. Felipe Franks has been a model Florida Gator. And I say this as somebody who had a murderer as his tight end for a championship <laughs> season. I can't, I can't even talk when it comes to some of my Miami teams. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, so uh, yeah. Uh-huh. There's, there's a reason it was Catholics versus convicts back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so real quick, before we move on to questions here, Brian Greasy, congratulations. Fuck off. Does this mean that we get to change the ending of the show? Maybe. We, we, we may have to do that. Brandon, are you game? Sure. At least for one, at least for one week, he gets the honorary glacier spot. Long-time listeners will Fair know what enough. that means. Long-time listeners will know what that means. New listeners will find out in probably about an hour. Ish. I'm just I'm just gonna point something out. Why? Who the fuck said we had long time listeners or new listeners? <laughs> Who the fuck said we had listeners? Okay. Well, I mean, I I will say this. I I will hold on, hold on. I know that we have one in particular listener. So with that, I will say, uh, uh, Heidi, hello, and we will. We, we have at least infected one person's mind with this podcast. Not to mention the nice lady that made my sandwich at the Publix today, who happens to be a Giants fan. I would be encouraging her to listen to the show. They have Giants fans in Florida? Those poor bastards. <laughs> yeah, she's from, like, Jersey, then Tennessee. Okay. She's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so she's a she's a transplanted Giants fan. That makes sense. I, I, I thought I, you said she was a tra- I thought you was going to say she was a transgender. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? I, I was, was just I was just about to say. Wait, I can still say transplanted in 2019, right? Yes. Okay, just making sure. All right, let's move on here. It's time for I've got questions, and hopefully you guys have answers. So, to the tune of what Brandon was trying to steal my thunder with earlier, you mentioned Daniel Jones getting the start this week. You mentioned that Josh Rosen will be starting for Miami this week as well. You mentioned that Cam Newton has been benched because of a foot injury in Carolina. Eric, I'm going back to the original format of the show for this question. Are you ready? Ready. Buy or sell at least half of the week one starting quarterbacks will not start their team's final game this season. I'm actually going to buy it simply because not just with injuries, looking at positions where the teams are going to possibly be, 
there's going to be more of an emphasis going towards the playoffs to either rest your starting quarterback, making sure they're healthy, to get yourself a playoff run, or figure out if you have anything in the future so that way going into the 2020 draft, you can see what your needs are well in advance. Because with the nowadays, with the constant levels of preparation, 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 plus with the collegiate schemes being adapted to the NFL and more college quarterbacks working in the NFL and working right away, teams are going to want to see if they have to jockey for those first couple of spots. So, yeah, I'm going to buy that. Braden? Um, are we saying that a... Okay, let me issue, let me issue a quick caveat here, because okay. I think I know where Brandon's about to go with this. If a team has clinched a playoff spot and the non-starting quarterback starts the final game, that doesn't count. Okay, okay. Then, I'm going to sell this just because I think there's enough teams, I mean, all of the teams that are going to be in playoff contention... Uh, are going to have a definitive starting quarterback that they're going to be using throughout the season. Um, yes, there have been some injuries, but I think it's going to be very close. I mean, I think we're already up to, what, like seven or eight teams that have switched quarterbacks. Um, so it'll be close, but I think it's just it's going to be just under half that don't end with the quarterback that they started with. Jason? I'm going to buy this. I think that it's a good possibility that that happens. I mean, you've got three currently going into this week. So, I mean, it, it, it's going to be a, a huge possibility. I mean, there's, I know of four definite starters that will be out at the end of the season, so I mean, there's only there's only 12 to go. We can do this. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll buy it. Real quick, for those wondering as they chart along with home, Nick Foles, if he returns to the starting lineup, would still count as the Jacksonville starter. If Gardner mm-hmm. Minshew performs to a level that they keep him as the starter, then it would be a new quarterback in Jacksonville for their finale. Alright, let's mm-hmm. move on here. Brandon, I know you're not the biggest college football fan on the show, but I feel this college football question is pretty universal. You ready? Okay. Georgia Notre Dame this week in what should be an excellent out of conference match got me thinking about out of conference rivalries that used to happen, ones that don't happen anymore, ones that are stopping, i.e., the Penn State Pittsburgh rivalry that Eric and I spent time talking mm. about earlier this week. What is your favorite out of conference rivalry in college football? Hmm. I think one that I, well, it doesn't really happen anymore. I wish it happened more. Um, I think the two that I'd have to say is Notre Dame, Michigan. That's one that occurs consistently. And then... They are playing later this year, actually. Yes. And then one that used to happen, but doesn't really happen anymore, but although it may happen in the future, considering the the relationship with them and the ACC, is Notre Dame-Boston College. Okay, fair enough. Jason, favorite college football rivalry out of conference? I'm going to have to go with, I mean, it sounds really weird, because, I mean, you know, Brandon picks a Notre Dame rivalry, I, and I'm going to, too. And I'm going to go to the Notre Dame-USC rivalry that, I mean, had some really good endings to a couple of games and it even impacted a couple of national titles in the past, in my, well, in my lifetime. But I think that was always a good rivalry. I mean, it was always the NBC game of the week. I mean, of course, Notre Dame had exclusive rights to NBC, but you always – Especially when they put it in prime time, it was all, always a marquee matchup. I think one of the issues, the reason why both Jason and I picked Notre Dame rivalries is because a lot of the rivalries 
that either you used to see out of conference or could potentially see out of conference now are seemingly going away. I mean, I think to an extent you have a point there. Like for me, one of my favorite rivalries when I was a kid was Nebraska, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And they, they still play it to this day, and that's actually my pick. But that was, a, that was an in-conference rivalry for a long For the time. longest time, yes. Mm-hmm. But then it became an out-of-conference mm-hmm. rivalry, and they just recently renewed it within the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And, and there, that kind of goes to one that was an in-conference rivalry that is now an out-of-conference rivalry that I would love to see come back, Texas and Texas A&M. Because even with Texas and Oklahoma, even with Texas A&M and LSU, when the Longhorns and the Aggies got together, and even if you go to places in Texas, they will tell you, even with all the other schools, you're either a Longhorn or an Aggie. And I saw so many shirts with the horns sawed off and the famous or infamous, depending on how you look at it, 12-7 A&M victory. I'm honestly surprised that uh, Harry didn't say Florida, Florida State. That would be too obvious for me, though. Fair enough. Just because, I mean, I I know a lot of people would think I would go there, and a lot of people would probably think if I didn't go there, I'd go Penn State and Pitt, because Mm -hmm. Penn State and Pittsburgh is one of the longest standing out of conference rivalries as well. Um, Penn State and Temple actually kind of qualifies under that line of thinking as well because they used to play each other every year. And now that Temple's going to be going to, um, now that Temple's in the American, um, with the American going to the expanded schedule next year, as well as the Big Ten going to its nine game schedule, there's no really no opportunity for Penn State and Temple to play each other much going forward. And, and another one, I'm, I'm surprised that. Uh, Jason didn't say this, which used to be a big, it used to be a big East rivalry, but West Virginia, Pittsburgh. Yep. Mm-hmm. West Virginia, Pittsburgh, both within the big East. Yes. That's what I just said. But, but yeah, now they're, uh, but now now they're out, out of conference. Of conference. Yeah. Well, I, I was thinking more along the lines of teams that have never been in conference together. That's what and I was I'll thinking even, too. I would, I would even throw this one to Harry. Uh, I could have went one direction. That would have encompassed me and Harry both. I could have said the old West Virginia Penn State football rivalry that was pretty well, it was a pretty good big talking point when West Virginia was looking for a conference and mm-hmm. was discussed about going to the Big Ten and you know, that would have been a good rivalry along it would have made a lot of geographical rivalries as well, but you know, somehow we end up in the Big Twelve. Yeah, I think a lot of the the bigger non-conference rivalries, especially now, are based around schools that were traditionally independent. Right. For the longest time, Penn State was an independent mm-hmm. up until the mid-90s when they joined the Big Ten. Which they were originally uh, thinking about joining the Big East, which that would have changed a ton of things. Ooh, the Big East would probably still be around right now if Penn mm-hmm. State was in it. At least as a foot <laughs> as a football conference for sure. Because mm-hmm. oh yeah, well, I don't know because I feel like I feel like the Big Ten would have still came calling and the Big Ten would have been able to offer more money. Fair enough, but that yeah, was I'm, the whole reason I'm, why I'm, they they never offered. If you guys have watched the uh, requiem for the Big East, was because the basketball schools were like, you know, Penn State isn't a good basketball school. We're in, we don't want them. Yeah, well, Miami wasn't a good basketball school, and look what happened. Fair I mean, if you if you look back at that, look at the, look at the if you would have threw Penn State into that, you would have had like West Virginia, Penn State, Miami. That would have been that would have been a nice nice little fo- pit. That would have been a nice little football conference if you would have added Penn State in there, and. You could have built around that significantly. You could have brought in a lot of sm- the smaller schools to give them the give them the rub later on, uh, and just build around some of those teams. I think that that would have been that could have changed the landscape of college football dr- drastically. All right, let's move on to our final question here. Again, Brandon trying to step on my toes. 
There are nine teams that are 0-2 in the National Football League. There have been two teams that have gone 0-16 in the National Football League. Excluding Miami, because it's not fair to pile on on a basically shooting fish in a barrel. Jason, which of the 0-2 teams do you think is the most likely to not win a game the rest of this season? Ooh, well, that's a uh, that's a tough one. Um, let me think here. This is gonna break my heart. Are you still but, saying what I think you're gonna say? I think he might be about to say what you think he's gonna say. I Don't think it, that it is. I think I think that there's there's a possibility that mine and Brandon's heart could be broken, and and if you know the injuries keep piling up and everything keeps looking bleak. A major market team out of New York could be the could be could be in a conversation along that line. Can I please go next because I'm going to turn exactly what he just said right there completely on its head. Are you going to pick the other major market team? In New <laughs> I York? am. Man, that's just a shitty. That's a shitty <laughs> half of the state down there, isn't it? Jesus. Well, technically, they both play in New Jersey, so they yeah. get exemptions. Yeah, fuck them. No, seriously, though. Um, I don't think that the Giants will go winless this year. No. And you know why I say that? Because they play because Miami. Got... Yes, exactly. <laughs> they have to play Miami later in the year. That's, I think you that's guys the only reason why one. I shouldn't be saying the Jets either, since they have to play Miami twice. Eric, do you have a pick for this particular discussion? If anything, I would say Cincinnati, simply because... If you, on your best possible effort and under what are some of your best possible circumstances, Andy Dalton turning from the beige water pistol into the red rifle, and you still can't win a game, you don't have hope. Not to mention getting your ass handed to you by San Francisco the week after. Jimmy G! I'm going to go with an off-the-wall prediction here because I think the wheels are starting to come off under Ron Rivera in Carolina. Mm. Mm. Cam Newton's gone. Christian McCaffrey's going to start getting pissed because he's not going to be getting enough carries because the team is going to be trailing in most of these games going forward. And I would not be surprised if Carolina wins more than five games this year. I'll be shocked. Mm -hmm. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, I could see them. I'd say maybe about three. Three and 13 is reasonable. The only thing keeping Carolina in the conversation for potentially having something resembling a decent city season is much the same as it is in the AFC South. Nobody in the NFC South is above 500 either. Not to mention Cam out, Breeze out. So you've got Jameis Winston and... Maybe Matt Ryan will keep things going for a while, but... <laughs> Jameis Winston, inconsistent. Matt Ryan, injury-prone. That division's a shit show. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, Eric. They are the last. That is the last division to produce an under-500 team in the postseason, the 7-8-1 Carolina Panthers. Who went on to win and faced Arizona with Ryan Lindley at quarterback. At home in the wild card round. The first ever playoff game broadcasted on ESPN. And you wonder why ESPN doesn't want these kinds of games. <laughs> so, with that, we wrap up. I've got a question. And we move on to I'm a Survivor. And unfortunately, I have sad news to deliver at the start of I'm a Survivor. Eric, you have been voted off the island. <laughs> Damn Steelers. You couldn't just... You could well, well that's Steelers. that's that could be that's foreshadowing for another segment. We will allow Eric to still participate, however, he has a strike against him already this season for I'm a Survivor. Eric's team of options for I'm a Survivor is now once again completely full. Unfortunately, the team he took in week one is the Tennessee Titans, and well, he can't pick them this week 
because the game is going on. Not that he would probably pick them against Jacksonville anyway. No, I would absolutely pick Jacksonville, but uh, yeah, Thursday. So, crap. <laughs> Brandon, you're a survivor. Um, remember how I talked about how I was going to pile on Miami even more later on? Yep. I had a feeling we were going to go there. Yep, I'm picking the Cowboys. It pains me to do it, but I got to pick the Cowboys. On behalf of Giants, <laughs> on behalf of Giants fans everywhere, wash your whore mouth. I I but, will but, as soon as but, the show's over. But to be fair, give him some credit. The Cowboys are one of the two biggest spreads in the NFL this week. And two of the biggest spreads ever. Speaking of which, yeah, I kind of wanted to touch on that real quick here, even though I, I took them last week, so I can't take them this week. The New England Patriots have opened up a minus, opened up, this was the starting line on this game, 23 and a half point favorites on the Jets. It is the largest opening line in NFL history. I wonder, what was the opening line for the Cowboys against the Dolphins, I wonder? I haven't seen it, but I can look it up and get that information the, to you in due time. Because the, yeah, because I know the current line is around, I think, 21 and a half. The, the NFL in 2019 does not know the definition of parody. Well, it certainly doesn't know it in the AFC East. Although, if you look at it, the AFC East is 500. There are two teams that are 2-0, and oh, and there are two teams that are 0-2. Oh so we're technically 4-4 four and four as a division. And shocking, Eric, shockingly, well, not really all that shockingly to me, but the Bills are 2-0. and I'm just telling you some bitches I called that well in advance. Nobody would listen to me. I, I told you guys that the Bills were going to be second in the East. Eric? Mm-hmm. Hypothetically speaking, if you were still in this competition, <laughs> who would you pick? Hypothetically, and I have to wash out my whore mouth, but since one big spread is already taken, I would go ahead and take the Patriots simply because, let's see, Sam Darnold, Mono, again, not my fault with shenanigans, Trevor Simeon, ankle, now you have another Washington State product in Luke Falk, who couldn't even do well against Cleveland. And you've got Tom Brady. And the rumors yeah. are the rumors are, are that Le'Veon Bell is already pissed about being a New York Jet. I Why I, am I, I, not I told I told you this last year. I knew this was going to happen. Some crappy team was going to pick him up, and he was going to regret what he was going to miss what he had in Pittsburgh. Le'Veon, I told you so. Jason. You're a survivor. Quite literally well, since, in this instance. <laughs> since Bisco pulled a Bisco and uh, took Dallas, uh, I, I'm going to switch it up, and I am going to take the Minnesota Vikings over Oakland. Um, we'll have a little bit of a conversation about that a little bit later on in the show. Dun, dun, dun. Dramatic reverb. <gasps> Okay, so Bisco went anti-Homer because, well, Bisco's going to Bisco, apparently. Well, I, 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 uh, stay tuned I, for a bit. I am going pro-Homer. I'm picking the Buffalo Bills to beat the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay. That's actually a very yeah. reasonable pick. Yeah. Although I will say this much. As I said in week one when I warned Brandon about Cincinnati against Seattle, they win games they shouldn't, they lose games they should win. When it comes to circling the wagons, the only team that can challenge Buffalo is Cincinnati. This, this is just going to be two teams just circling the drain like two coins just racing to get to the bottom first. Is there, I wonder what the odds are that this game will end in a tie. <laughs> I am so curious. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to bet that Vegas probably has a betting line on a tie in the game. <laughs> not be surprised. What what happens if in these there is a tie? Technically well, speaking, you did not lose, so you're a survivor. Fair enough. 
Eric, even though you've been vote, voted off the island, we are encouraging you to get it together. Okay. Remember, think back to when I said about Michigan and Army. What was the main reason why I said Army could hang tough with the Wolverines at the big house? Triple option. Correct. The triple option. Army, offense. Army has a lot of black kids that are disciplined. Eric. Not as not as many as you think, but beside the point, Bisco had it right, the triple option. When Paul Johnson was the head coach at Georgia Tech, what offense did he run? Triple option. Correct again. He is now gone from Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, for the first time since 1983, lost at home to an FCS team. The Citadel in overtime. What offense does the Citadel run? Triple option. The triple option. For God's sake, Georgia Tech, get it together. And go back to the triple option. Making the ACC look bad. You're making yourselves look bad. Paul Johnson is somewhere laughing his balls off. Yeah, the triple option wasn't so bad now, was it? I'm just going to state for the record that in the um, in the bottom 10 that I always recommend that you guys check out on ESPN.com, the writer for the bottom 10 literally put the ACC as his number five seed, which is like the kind of the joke spot that goes to the bigger conferences for teams that underperform in the big conferences. And then said the Citadel went to Georgia Tech, who fired Paul Johnson for running the triple option and beat Georgia Tech with the triple option. <laughs> I, I will say, while it it wouldn't work for it probably wouldn't work for a major program, the triple option is probably the most fun offense to run in NCAA football fourteen. Oh, and it, it, it has worked with some major programs. Look at the SMU with the Pony Express back in the eighties. Fair enough. They ran the triple option. Fair enough. And you'll be hearing a little bit more about it later in the show. Go ahead, Eric. I'm, I'm ready. Go ahead. So, you, are you trying to sit here and ruin my deep tease? You, you think that you can get no. it together? <laughs> no. I'm telling you to give me a dun-dun-dun so I can say dramatic reverb. Oh. Dun-dun-dun! <laughs> dramatic reverb. Moments passed. <laughs> Seriously, I don't do that. You're always the one to set me up. It's like, uh, oh, jeez. Secret Squirrel and Morocco Mole. I always come in second. If there's one thing we've learned on this show, it's that I'm full of shtick. <laughs> Brandon, get it together. Hey, just so you know, I never come second. <laughs> and that means you're not doing it right. Yeah, you know? really. Can I... <laughs> Can I point out uh, uh, the fact that he's the only married one of the group of us? <laughs> and all I'm going to say, life is a fucking sprint to the finish, not a goddamn marathon. Technically, if you look at it statistically, it's a middle distance race. <laughs> Brandon, get it together. <laughs> My get it together other than this whole show. Uh, <laughs> facts. Is... And and this this one is probably just as likely to get together as this show is the Carolina Panthers. Cam's out. Like Harry said earlier, Matt McCaffrey is going to be starting to bitch and complain. Luke Keekley is probably going to want to leave soon. You got to get your act together, Carolina, if you don't want to go 0-16, which we talked about earlier. Uh, so, yeah, Carolina Panthers, get together. And Luke Kinkley, Jacksonville is very nice this time of year. A little farther south, you're used to the weather. No state tax. Just saying. And I'm hearing they're looking for a star defensive player now that Jalen Ramsey's splitting. Eh? 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 <laughs> Jason, get it together. I get it together is for a fan, uh, a, a team that I cannot stand their fan base, because of how much they live in the past. That's right. 
the Pittsburgh Steelers who can go eat a dick, and I am loving the fact that you're 0-2. And I'm going to go out and say you're going to be 0-3 at the end of this weekend because you're starting what I think is was one of the hidden gems in a pretty solid quarterback class, not a great quarterback class, but I kind of wish Mason Rudolph would have ended up in New York. I'll go ahead and say it. Um, but in all honesty, I mean, you're going to the West Coast playing a pretty solid San Francisco team, and you're going to start a inexperienced quarterback. Your running back is banged up. Uh, I do believe that I came out and publicly said that Juju's a great receiver, but he's no wide receiver one. And I'm kind of proving that right. And Moncrief is just a disaster playing across from him. So, they're, and they have, and they have a solid defense. They just can't stop anybody. So my get it together is Mike Tomlin and the Steelers. Have fun I, being 0-3 at the end of the weekend. Pittsburgh has some relief coming to the defense in Minka Fitzpatrick, now, now escaping that dumpster fire we call the Dolphins. Can that be their official name for the rest of the season, the Miami Dumpster Fires? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Same here. So let it be written, so let it be done. All right, anyway. This is also a San Francisco defense only allowing 17 points a game so far and a basically rookie quarterback making his first trip out to the West Coast for what would be a 1 o'clock start out there but would feel like a 4 o'clock start back home. It'll be interesting to see how Mason Rudolph adjusts to the time difference. Usually going east to west is a lot more yeah. favorable than heading west to east. Because but you're at the still kind of used to playing 4 o'clock games every now and again. Yeah, but at the same time, though, this is going east to west for a rookie quarterback who's never done it before. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Hasn't he played some games, like, at different parts of the country playing at Oklahoma State? Yeah, I was going to say, in college, he he kind of he kind of has that that adjustment due to college I was going to say, wouldn't Oklahoma State be more middle ground? Is it Oklahoma yes, State it, Central time yeah, zone? Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a middle ground for them. So you're not really losing too much of a difference going one way or the other. Exactly. Yeah. We'll see what happens with him going out to the West Coast, though. And as I said, this is a <clears throat> excuse me. This is a San Francisco defense that is, I do believe. Fourth in the NFL in current scoring defense. Fifth, excuse me. I just looked up the numbers right now. All right, my get it together. Eric kind of teased it a little bit earlier in the show. I forgot what he was referring to until he refreshed my memory. And then I remembered why they were my get it together, because they are the team that I picked to win the Big Ten this year. Yeah, how's that working for you so far? (laughs) And they can't beat fucking Arizona State! (sighs) Back-to-back years that the Sparks and the Sun Devil... I mean, yes. this will really give credence to Mike Leach as far as what Pac-12 mascot would win in a fight. This, this is back-to-back years that Harry has picked a certain team to win a major conference, and they've uh, crapped the bed very early. You, you He's a modern-day Jimmy the Greek. That's it! <laughs> I'm a modern-day jinx. It's, oh, my God, I am the radio broadcast equivalent of the Madden curse. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! All right. Anyway, hey Sparty, get your shit together. You're starting your pack. You're starting your Big Twelve. Your little little <laughs> your Big Ten schedule. I can't even. You're, you're trying to move them to other conferences so they look better in comparison. Now, yeah, absolutely. Get your shit together because you're about to start your Big Ten schedule, and I really don't want to look like half a freaking retard here on the show. Oh, okay. you already do. I mean, let's just say this: this could give you an opportunity. Do you like Toronto? We could get you together with Drake, maybe have some sort of energy in every. I'm going to go alive. ahead and tell you shut up right now, Eric, because fuck Drake. <laughs> you started at the bottom, now you ain't on this show. Moving <laughs> <in>. <laughs> All 
All right, gentlemen. It's that time of the week, the part of the show we usually look forward to the most. The end. No, it's time for... (laughs) Are you serious? So, every other week, as was tradition last year, I'm going to update everybody on the standings for Are You Serious? After two weeks, Brandon leads at 3-1 and one against the spread. Myself and Jason are both 2-2 two and two against the spread. Jason has the tiebreaker based on a smaller point differential. Eric is last, but Eric has a win already this year, so Eric is winning. Again, a- Eric, you're officially our Michael Strahan. Look, I'm already better than last year, so I'm taking baby steps. We are a combined 8-8 eight and eight against the spread thus far, which actually is not bad for some of the ridiculous picks that we've given you over the course of these first two weeks. Yeah, Hawaii. Mm-hmm. I trusted your ass, Nick Rolovich. Northern Fucking Colorado? Nevada. Nevada. <laughs> hey, hey, I warned you about Nevada. That's on you. That's you, you guys all laughed at me for the Northern Colorado pick. They covered by a point, Brandon. Exactly, I but they still covered. No, Brandon, we laugh at you at all times. That just happened to be a convenient <laughs> reason. <laughs> so we're a combined 8-8 eight and eight against the spread. Straight up, well, the upset picks kind of bear out the fact that they are upset picks. We are a combined 2-16 and 16 straight up. But only one person has those victories. It's not me. Radio silence. <laughs> it's definitely not me. It I has picked to be you, Eric. No. I picked. I picked Kansas State last week, plus seven against Mississippi State. They won by seven. I picked Seattle plus four against Pittsburgh. They won by two. The straight up victories are both mine. See, you've been picking closer uh, spreads where I've I've been going. I can't help that you're picking fucking Northern Colorado. What do you want from me? <laughs> I'm just saying that that's the only reason why you have straight up wins. Well, then look at the schedules better and look for straight up victories. It's not my fault. I'm looking ones for that. I'm looking for ones that are easy. He's just looking for ATS covers, and he actually has a doozy of a pick for college this week. So, Brandon, why don't you go ahead? Not really. It's not really all that much of a doozy. You're getting a very generous line. I am getting a very generous line. So, thank you very much. It's a very smart pick. Number well, seven, you, dumbass. What? Announce it, dumbass. I, I, I was about to. So, number seven, Notre Dame, is going to number three, Georgia. You would think, yeah, it's at, at Georgia, it's in, in the hedges, all of that, but it's still Notre Dame. They're ranked seventh. You would think this line would be a little closer than 14 and a half. I take Notre Dame, 14 and a half. This game, even if they don't win it, it's going to be a lot closer than 14 and a half. Hold, hold on, I'm going to protest this pick. Okay, there is a reason. Because your underdog selection did not cover the spread when you originally picked it, Jason. I, I was told that it had to be 10 spots from now on. It has to be 10 spots unless the numbers, unless the, uh, the line. It's, uh, it's a straight. Hey, quit, quit, quit trying to cater to Bisco. We all know I that he's special. I specifically asked about everything. this earlier because of that. And Harry gave me the go ahead. The line is 14 and a half, and I think Notre Dame's about to get racked, so it's really not going to matter. Eric, are you serious? Remember how I teased earlier about the triple option when I was mentioning that they, they get it together? Mm-hmm. The Citadel is not the only school left that runs the triple option there's a little one that happens to be a service academy school based in Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. Yep. You son of a bitch. You're going against the blue. Mm-hmm. This anti-smurf, this anti-smurf turf bitch. 
Look, I mentioned it. I mentioned it. Hold on, hold on. Eric's pulling a bisco on me. Technically, no, actually, you're the one that pulled the pistol. Yeah, I called it Eric, first. Eric announced it first in the group chat. <laughs> well, I was kind of in the middle of, and nobody, nobody explained, you know, why I was going through everything today. Eric's already got that, so now I got to go look again. No, we were just going to let you both pick Air Force. Yeah, you, That's can, it. you can have multiples. Given the week, given the week that you had, we were just going to let you both pick Air Force. Exactly. You motherfuckers. <laughs> Look, I, I even right. mentioned this in the chat. Hank Bachmeyer having some issues taking a couple too many hits to the fact that now he's not always taking every snap in the game. And again, Air Force, they run the triple option. Boise State hasn't seen it. So as solid as they are, and as great of a comeback win they had that really warmed my heart against Florida State, I'm sorry, go Falcons, plus eight and a half. My line is the same as Eric's, or at least it was when I originally saw it. And if there's one thing that people will learn on this show is that I am a vengeful motherfucker. And I do not appreciate my Big Ten champions being defeated by a couple of sun devils. <laughs> Therefore, I'm going to take Colorado plus eight and a half against Arizona State. I see seven and a half. So, so we're still going with what, what being the criteria for college? Because I see a really nice three and a half point spread, and I can't take it. You but can't by take God, it. it's worth it. But by God, I, it's a fucking nice upset. Is it a is it an unranked team over a ranked team? Yes, it is. Then it counts. But the spread is only three and a half. Doesn't matter. You have a you have a ranked team losing to an unranked team. Oh God, that's going to be. Uh, I I feel good about that. You're you're t- you're, you're going to take USC. Yes, I'm going to take USC. Utah. Ooh, ooh! Wow, that's. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. I gave that game a look because I thought that Utah is kind of undervalued right now. I just I think. I just think it's like for a, a top ten team only given a, only being at a three and a half spread. I mean, it is yeah. at home for USC. I was going to say, you got to think that they're, yeah, they're in the L.A. Memorial. So technically speaking, on a neutral field, this would be Utah favored by seven. Not to mention the fact that, I mean, let's face it, Utah, they have been undervalued. And you've got the added pressure of Clay Helton week in, week out coaching for his job. USC is coming off of that loss last week, too. Hmm. Uh, so, so no, that that pick yeah. is acceptable yeah. since it's since it's an unranked team beating a ranked team, regardless of spread. Okay. All right, Brandon, we move over to the National Football League. <clears throat> Are you serious? Remember how you said I went anti Homer for uh, the uh, Survivor pick? Are you pro Homer here? Yes, I am. Giants plus six. Against the Buccaneers. Remember how I said, I don't trust the Buccaneers. The Giants are going to be coming into this game wanting to prove Daniel Jones is the man now. And they, they may not win, but it will be closer than six. I will encourage you that if you cannot find the Buccaneers to look under your... Never mind. <laughs> Eric? I'm going back and looking at mine because I know it was a nice spread, even though it's probably going to cost. There it is. Okay. We've got a certain quarterback battle. We've got a potential shootout brewing because one quarterback we expected to do wonderful things and win with his arm, which he has. Another we expected to do wonderful things down the road. But not win with his arm yet, but he's shown that under certain situations he's very capable. 
Now, while I'm not banking on a straight up win, I think that's a little bit unreasonable. I think Lamar Jackson can show that he can do enough, even with this revamped Kansas City defense, to keep this the close game that everybody has been banking on. Ravens plus six and a half. Is that number still six and a half? I'm looking for it. Where the fuck is the Baltimore game at? I got the hell it. Is up there? Yeah, five, no, and a half, five and a half now. Which is still within the yeah. boundaries of him being able to pick yeah. it. So. Wow, so long- that has been bet down. That alone is interesting. Jason? Bisco clipped me, so I'm looking up another one. Yeah. You can I swear to too. God. No, no, I don't. I don't like piling on. So, all right. Well, well I'll, I'll allow Jason. So let, 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 Harry, let Harry go ahead and take it, and I'll. I was going to say, while we let Jason look up a different pick, I'll go ahead and give you guys mine. Jason, I think you're in trouble this week. And I'm referring no. to the survivor pool here, because I do not trust Minnesota. At all. Period. And they are laying eight and a half to Oakland. I have nine and a half. It was eight and a half when I first looked at the numbers. So people were betting on Minnesota, apparently, Mm -hmm. after Minnesota's win last week. I am taking the Oakland Raiders then, plus whatever I'm getting, nine and a half. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make this bold prediction right now. In keeping with what I said last week about Kansas State and their game against Mississippi State, not only will Oakland cover the spread, Oakland wins this game straight up. Wow. Yeah, I had a similar level of faith, and look at what happened to me. I'm surprised none of you guys took uh, either the uh, either the Jets or the Dolphins, but I guess uh, someone learned from last week. Yeah, Josh I'm... Rosen against the Cowboys. Luke Falk against Since... the Patriots. Mm. I'm going go, to go ahead and call this out. Since Harry wants to take a shot at me, I'm going to reciprocate oh, and take a, a shot. I'm going to take the Bengals getting six versus Buffalo. Ah, uh, you son of a bitch. As soon as you <laughs> said you're going to reciprocate, I knew where you were going with that. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll see what happens. It's cool. No, don't get me wrong. I will forever be in debt to Andy Dalton here. Long-time listeners of the show know why. I don't think I have to go back over it. I mean, look, it was a very great moment for you. And then, just like how you're indebted to Andy Dalton, we're forever indebted to Nathan Peterman. So, (laughs) it works both ways. I just realized that if Garrett Carr gets hurt, Oakland sees us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! If that's the case, then we need a uh, we need a picker mentality on on the show. Well, we've Intercept actually dubbed him. We've dubbed him with a different name on this show. We have dubbed him the Intercepticon. Fair enough. But. All right, we'll see what happens here. Do you think so? Do you think Cincinnati covers, or do you think Cincinnati actually wins? I think Cincinnati wins outright. I'll take the cover, but I'm going to take an outright win. That hurts me right in my socket. <laughs> say bye bye to the undefeated season, Harry. I mean, we play New England next week, so that was pretty much a done deal anyway. Fair enough. After all, if you talk to the Miami defenders, the referees will tell you not to land too hard on Tom Brady. You might kick sand in his vagina. (laughs) Uh, Well, Eric, did you see that shit? What the fuck was that? I did, and I read, and I'm like, really? Did did you? I get that. I get that. It's been like an unwritten thing. Don't touch his supposed whatever. Or you can't breathe on his oak boots or it's a 15-yarder. But do they pretty much have to come out and admit it and be this blatant now? Yeah, I mean, at this point, they don't care because the NFL can do whatever the hell they want. Uh, Let let me just say. And he has the goal during the game tonight to tweet that there are too many penalties. 
Let, of all people. Let, let me just say real quick, in honorary so that happened real quick that I just remembered about, mad props to, um, crap, I'm forgetting his name, the Jets, uh, sa- the Jets, uh, cornerback, who got fined this week. Oh. Uh, hold on. I got nothing have- because y'all know I don't even fucking do regular research for the show. Give me a second. I'm pulling up the uh, I'm pulling up the news section on ESPN.com right now to see if I can find it real quick. But what, when Harry uh, finds his name, he'll say it. But mad props to him for basically calling out the NFL on the BS that is the whole roughing the passer and targeting and all of that, and basically saying I'm gonna play football the way I was trained to play football. And if you want to find me, then go ahead. I don't care. Yeah. Eric, do you, do you see anything? Because I'm not getting anywhere here. I will look that up. I was busy looking at one of Tim Tebow's records being broken, which makes me smile. <laughs> By Derek King of the Houston Cougars. Yep. In their game, in their game against the Tulane Green Wave tonight. Jamal just, Adams. At- yeah, Jamal Adams. There you go. I was just hoping Mahomes would break his neck. The views and opinions of Jason Teasley do not necessarily reflect... Well, it depends on how annoying Robert Taylor gets. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> I honestly want Buffalo to smoke Cincinnati by like 30 now, just so I can rub it in Jason's face next week on the show. And, hey, hey, all I'm going to say is there's only one person that has kept their word on this show when losing a bet or anything and that has owned up to everything that he has, he has spoken about. When being wrong, he has owned up to it. We all know that that's me. And I'm, going to point, I'm just going to point out, I got laughed at when I said the NFC West was a lot tougher than people gave them credit for and that I picked Pittsburgh to finish third in the division. Yeah, all three of you can eat a dick. Yeah, but you also picked a lot about the Browns and how's that going so mm-hmm. far? Well, it's early on the season on the Browns. Their their egos will get in check. Yeah, I mean, if you you ask the Jets how the Brown season's going, they'll tell you it's looking pretty decent thus far after what happened on Monday Night Football, I'm just saying. Well, that's because one of their star players finally got an endorsement deal about watches, so there's that. <laughs> to the AFC and NFC South, get it together, honorary mention. Because even after the... Apparently, even after this Thursday night football game, ain't nobody in either division going to be above 500. Mm -mm. I will say this much, though, Eric. You're a half a game out of first place if this holds. I'll take it. I will take it. (laughs) Eric, where can people find you online? At Squid Sports Head, and I used to be on a whole bunch of different podcasts here, but... um. Yeah, the carousel that is executive producers, not so much. The, in, instead of it being the coaching carousel, it's the producing carousel around here. Basically, dismantled just like the one in St. Augustine. Well, I will uh, promise you guys this. I will never executive produce an episode of this show. It's hard enough keeping these guys in line to actually do the show. Well, I mean, you know, it's kind of hard to keep us in line and, you know, juggle your weekend plans about going fishing and everything. So you just got to you got to be able to do what you can do when you can do it. (laughs) All right. Real quick here, Eric, a a soliloquy for Jessica James. Now, everybody must understand, she is one of the unfortunate amongst those who have passed, and she will be missed dearly. She still has a very special place in my heart and on my hard drive. From 
her early career as a teacher to her wonderful, very performances throughout the years as an actress. Hopefully there was no foul play. I hope it was nothing too terribly tragic. Details should be coming out within the next couple of weeks. But let's just say there's a little bit of extra sadness and um, a little extra softness in a lot of pants tonight after hearing this news. If the situation plays out that the rumors are prescription drugs were found nearby and the belief is that it may have been an accidental overdose, an accidental, either accidental or intentional, but the belief is accidental. She also had a history of seizures as well. Yes, seizures, cardiac arrest, it's very if sad. It tur- if it turns out that it was natural causes, something like that, then so be it. It's just her time. That being mm-hmm. said, if it turns out that it was something in regards to the adult industry's ability to bring not-so-great headspace to people, I remind everybody, 1-800... Did you just say headspace? I did. 100%. That, that, that was- that was that was kind of sly little pun there. It was one hundred percent on purpose. <laughs> I remind everybody one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. Don't Jason, don't follow in the footsteps of Amber Rain as well. Although granted, headspace really wasn't her mentality. Brandon, where can people find you online? They can find me online on Twitter at Bisco underscore Gotham SN and uh, on Facebook in all the various groups. Jason, where can people find you online? Other than I don't want nobody to, registry. I don't want nobody to fucking find me. Fuck all of you. I don't <laughs> y'all don't need to fucking find me. I'm a I'm an old raggedy recluse man that's gonna die of a heart attack, so I probably won't answer any fucking message you send me anyway. But if you so happen to want to, it's at TurkeyGlue822 on Twitter, and go fuck yourself on Facebook. <laughs> or to steal a line from now out of touch wrestling promoter Jim Cornette, thank you, fuck you, bye. Or even better, you could find me doing a guest starring on an MTV reality show called Catfish, where we track down... Okay. Okay. God. No. Stop. All right. I was just giving a plug to an MTV show that has talks about fish. If if it if it it was an MTV show that's not remote control, I don't care. (laughs) Yes, you do. Yes, you do. HEB the Eagle on Twitter, even though I admittedly barely use it. Uh, Harry Broadhurst on Facebook. Find me there. Send me a message. I'll respond. I'm up to talking football, wrestling, whatever, what have you. Um, those of you who listen to our podcast through your various podcast services, such as iTunes, iHeartRadio, and the like, will find that the show will be on a, a slight delay going forward as we will re- be recording slightly later than we usually do for the rest of the season due to the start of the Wednesday Night War. I tell you about a Monday Night War... But, well, somebody doesn't hold up his end of podcast commitments. <sighs> I've been through that before. Hey, he's getting... That person's pro- getting just as bad as the chair for not showing up to scheduled podcasts. That's saying something, man. You gotta work probably, on that. So. Probably worse. No, I mean... Hell. You, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Did he get you as well, Eric? Look, I mean, no, I'm not talking about someone else. I'm not talking necessarily about Bisco. I'm talking about someone else. Have you heard a particular absence in shows like Soccer to the Max lately? Have you seen a particular absence that was supposed to debut called Fantasy Football to the Max? Or the Monday Night War? Yes, yes, yes. Anyway. As I'm speaking, piling up on things. <laughs> hey, um, biscuit. hey I, I got an idea, Jason. Maybe we could do a fantasy football podcast. And we'd actually get it off the ground. We'd actually, it'd actually be, it'd be something that we could put on a network. 
Hey. Hey, I'm, a, I'm not paying for it. We, we need a producer. And then mm. Bisco will show up for that. <laughs> I don't know. We could probably get Sean to produce it. That might be something he's useful at. Because <laughs> Sean could talk about his... only thing he could talk about is Dallas, though. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he could kind of stick to whoever Dallas plays that week as well, because I'm sure he'll have watched the game. All right, let's move on. Let's get this show over with, because we're coming up on the we're coming up on the hour and a half mark that we usually try to end around. So this has been the kickoff here on the w 2 Network and available on all of your favorite podcast listening services such as iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, Podbean, CastBox. Hey, Brandon, guess what? Spotify is here. And Brian Greasy is an asshole. <laughs> or Brandon Biscobing, Jason Teasley, and Eric Watkins. I am Harry Broadhurst, thanking you for listening to episode three of season three of The Kickoff here on the W2M Network. Online at W2Mnet.com. We'll talk to you guys next week.